All right, so right now I'm gonna be talking about defense medical examinations, also known as independent medical examinations. What are they? So in personal injury actions, if the injury is severe enough, as you get closer to the trial, the defense is going to want to conduct what they call an independent medical examination, but what plaintiff's attorneys typically call what the truth is, is that it's a defense medical examination. What they do is the defendant, probably their insurance company, goes and hires a doctor, uh, usually an orthopedist for car accident cases, to evaluate whether or not the plaintiff is actually injured, whether or not the injury was from the accident, whether or not they're going to need any future services as a result of the accident. Many, many, many times, the majority of the time, after a plaintiff goes to a defense medical examination, the, the orthopedist usually writes a report saying they're perfectly fine now, they've healed completely, they don't need anything else, uh, the accident may or may not have caused the injury, maybe it was caused from these pre-existing conditions, so on and so forth. So no matter what you do, you know, you could be nice at the defense medical exam, but just know that the defense medical examiner is not your friend. They could be nice, they could be funny, they could be humorous, but just know that, you know, how they are that day, their report is going to come out probably pretty scathing against you and probably going to try and hurt your case as much as they can. That's because the defense is paid by the insurance company and they get paid over and over and over and over. And if the defense, if the defense medical examiner starts opining against the insurance company, then that may result in less business for that medical examiner. I know it's a very controversial, I guess you could say, but this is, you know, this is kind of how it goes. They really, they say these terrible things when they don't have a lot of bases for it. Perhaps they don't look at medical records so carefully or whatever it is, but they come out with these really nasty reports and it's really up to the plaintiff's attorney to go and cross-examine uh, these defense medical experts uh, down the line as you get closer to trial and through trial. <clears throat> so what should you do when you show up at a defense medical examination? So obviously you wanna be totally, totally truthful about everything that's going on. Every, all your uh, current complaints, you wanna be thorough about your current complaints. Um, they'll, they'll go through a history with you. When they ask about the accident and how the accident happened, you can pretty much just give a vague answer. You don't have to go into the whole mechanics of the accident and how things exactly occurred. You probably have already had your deposition done by then and your written uh, discovery responses done by then. So you don't need to go into so, to so much detail as to how the accident happened. The defense already has this information and it's just not so relevant again, to be asked it again at a defense medical examination. When going through your medical history, you can be thorough, uh, talk about, you know, if you have any prior accidents, be sure to talk about that. The defense probably already knows about it. So there's, first of all, it's just dishonest to hide that kind of stuff. Second of all, I mean, if they're entitled to that information. And second of all, um, you know, it's just, it, it just may, they, they probably just know about it anyway. So talk about prior accidents, prior injuries, uh, current injuries, be thorough about all your current injuries. If you've been recommended for any future care, talk about that, talk about who recommended that future care, talk about what kind of treatments you've had. Um, they'll go through an entire history with you and then they will go through the actual examination. So as a plaintiff, you have the right against any uh, painful studies. So if things start hurting you, then you have the right to just say, no, I don't wanna do that. Uh, there are certain situations that you can say no to, but it's very important to consult with your attorney about uh, whether you can say no to certain portions of the exam. And it's important for your attorney to be well versed in this area so that they know when and where to intervene and to say, no, you can't do that. Uh, many times an attorney will go with you. Many times you, a nurse will go like what, what they call a, a DME observer, um, defense medical examination observer usually some kind of licensed nurse, a registered nurse um, that's been doing this a while can go and observe what's going on. Um, that could be very helpful. 
Another thing that you want to do during a defense medical examination is to audio record it. So if you don't have an, an attorney or a nurse with you that you could just pretty much bring your cell phone, turn on the audio record and say to the defense medical examiner that I'm audio recording this examination and that is within the code of civil procedure um, that you can certainly do. Um, so, you know, the night before a medical ex defense medical examination, obviously you want to kind of be, you want to be well rested for it. Um, you want to be forthcoming and uh, probably are going to want to dress comfortably because they'll have probably have you put on some kind of gown while they do the, uh, the studies and just go through it and you'll probably get a report that's against you anyway, but the defense is entitled to do this. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And I look forward to seeing your feedback.